here's just a little quick and dirty thing that I threw together real quick just to see about the concept and uh, I'll go ahead and, and show it to you let me explain it first we just have two ferrites here and we've got a magnet I'm not sure the poles but let's say that's north and that's south then this is north and that's south so they're they're pulling together they're not in opposition and so the magnetic field goes out along the ferrite since it's um, magnetically conductive and this is just stuff I had lying around they, these don't do anything they're just hanging out there and um, whatnot it's just kind of the idea this wire is doing something so we got one leg of this wire going out to one leg of a cap we got the other leg going out through a diode to the other leg of the cap. Since there's only one diode, it's half wave rectification. You'd want to use a full wave bridge rectifier, but this was just to see is there is there actually anything there. And this is sort of something I picked up from Don Smith. Um, Rick Friedrich talks about it in his excellent Don Smith book, and I'm pretty sure it goes back to Tesla as well, although I don't know enough about about him to know but this is I'll show it to you and then I'll explain why I think it's kind of cool so here we just have a cap let me finish shorting it out and here we have this I'm gonna break this so now there's not a complete magnetic flux path and now I'm gonna bring it back together and that's what shows up in the cap so that's that's interesting let me do it again now, if I do it slowly, pull it apart. If I had a full wave, you'd see something happen when I pulled it apart. And I'll bring it together slowly. Pretty much next to nothing. Now, pull it apart. That first one was good. Yeah, well, that was like 10 times better than the other one, but 10 times worse than the first. One more try. Oh, what did I do wrong? Okay, so we get the idea. So what's interesting to think about with this is that we're getting magnetic flux because we're changing the permeability of the magnetic flux path. Here you have a complete magnetic flux path and then you break it and then you reconnect it because it's half wave we're only seeing it when you reconnect it but you would have electricity coming out from magnetic flux when you break and when you remake that flux path and you can see also that the rate of change of the magnetic flux it varies depending on how quickly I bring that together or let it come together slowly so the idea that was presented in Rick's book, let's say you have, now this is going to be difficult to do, but you would have, you know, these things anchored in. And then say you have a, a rotor coming through this gap and the rotor is made of PLA, but then there is a bit of either, you could probably just use some ferrite, just have some ferrite coming through to connect the path. Or you could have ferrite or, or mu metal or something like that. But you would want ferrite to complete the path, and then the rotor spins out, PLA, which would be just like air, and then ferrite, then PLA. The only problem that I see with this from a build standpoint is if you have the rotor coming through and it's not dead center then it's going to want to be pulled towards either this side or this side. And if that happens, then the rotor is probably going to start wobbling, and then pretty soon it's going to go boop, and it's going to stick there. But there is definitely a concept here that works. How easily or not it could be implemented, I don't know. But a couple last comments there here is that if you spun the rotor faster, that would be like bringing this in slowly or quickly that would, how quickly the magnetic flux would be changing and that would help determine you know more quickly the magnetic flux changes the better spike you're going to get out there and the last point i'd make let's bring this a little further apart is 
if you have the rotor dead center, then it's going to be pulled equally to this side, equally to that side, so the net effect that way will be zero. The rotor will be moving this way, the magnetic fields are this way and that way canceling out, and so it's not going to have much, you know, you're not going to get it perfect, but it's not going to have much more increased resistance than freewheeling. So, just as a really quick and dirty first glance at this, there might be something to that, that instead of um, handling the poles of the magnet, change the magnetic flux path at the blotch wall. So if I ever get it running, maybe I'll call it like the, the blotchinator generator. I don't know if that's even how you say it, blotch wall, block wall, whatever. But you get the idea. That's it. Thanks.